Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. It's time to kick back with our latest shoe ripe poor tea. This is the Kickback Champ. The Kickback Champ. This is a Bulang shoe pua, a ripened fermented pua from Bulang. Let's quickly scope this tea. Season is from April 2015. I'm speaking to you from 2022. So this is seven years old currently. Cultivar is the Daya Jong variety. Origin is Bulang Menghai, one of the best mountain ranges for umfi, powerful, delicious teas. Uh, picking and processing is going to be a bud and young leaves, elevations around 1,500 meters. And as you can see from the front cover, the wrapper by Celine, we've chosen a horse that is sitting next to an ice cream parlor in London. You can tell it's London because you've got the red telephone box, although they're kind of disappearing in London a little bit because who uses a telephone box these days? But still, an icon of London sitting there on the pavement, just late night, we're imagining sort of a late night uh, ice cream session. And he's got a trophy there because he or she is the kickback champ. In other words, the champion of chillaxing, the champion of just kicking back and letting the world continue around you. And uh, the horse is slurping on some ice cream from this ice cream parlor behind. It's been a while since we've released a uh, ripe pua that is um, of the ilk of after party enchanter milk float nomad um, and a little bit jungle starlet although that's slightly different where we are trying to really um uh find a tea that expresses those creamy notes i don't have a tea pet here that is disgraceful always one nearby okay <clears throat> here we go let's open up this cake and see what it looks like You could say Gong Ting perhaps um, because it looks very, very fine. You can see here, very, very fine picking. Lots and lots of that uh, um, copper um, bronze colored buds. The kickback champ. Uh, now I need, I have really not prepared myself here. I need to get a poor pick. Hello, poor pick. Okay, we're gonna to have to improvise a little bit here. Let's see what this is like, just in terms of giving it a little bit of movement. Yeah, we can do this. Sorry, a bit chaotic here in London. So many things need to be done. And uh, the perfect reason why I need to kick back. So you can see, you don't really need the poor pick if it's um, been pressed not too tight like this. <clears throat> yeah, the the look of the leaves, definitely fine picking. Very, very young, young leaves. And lots of bud material there. Right, I've got a little scale here. So let's see, we're looking at around six or seven grams of this. Put it this way. Okay, that's two. That's 5.1, yeah. Let's do around seven grams, something like that. There you go, there or thereabouts. Okay, I'll put this to the side and then we will leave this one here and gonna heat up my temple guy one here. Break up these leaves a little bit. The kickback champ, the champion of just letting the world pass by and kicking back, relaxing, late night drink. I always associate Shupua with sort of my late night relaxation, chatting with friends, um, drink, of course I drink Shupua as well as a digestive after a meal, but they sort of go hand in hand. And um, whilst I, you can drink this tea any time of the day, of course, that's always my association, which is why I imagined, or we imagined this, this horse, just late night, 
just like going for an ice cream and uh, and relaxing. Okay. <clears throat> oh, give the elephant a little refresher. In go these leaves from Boulang. I will be going through a filter because right poor tends to be a little bit more broken. <clears throat> okay, let's give this a smell. Ah. R raisins. Uh, raisins, butterscotch. Uh, uh, custard. Yeah, that creamy note is going on there. Some fruits as well. Um, cherry, but like really uh, cooked down cherries, black cherries made into a black cherry conserve or a black cherry jam. Um, so the flavor notes that we picked up um, when we tasted it, obviously it doesn't change that much. I mean, it will shift a little bit as you press it, but when we tasted the loose tea, we were picking up those cherry jams, which is why you've got this sort of cherry jam um, ripple over the ice cream. So custards, um, as I said, brown sugar, raisins. It also has like um, a fluffy uh, white bread quality, not brioche, which is too buttery um, and sort of enriched. Just like um, if you think about those, uh, if you know any Japanese bakeries with those very fluffy white loaves. So fluffy white bread. It also has a smell of proving bread. So bread that's rising. So it's got this lovely doughy, uh, warm sort of bready note to it. Um, and then raisins, brown sugar and black cherry jam. If that doesn't delight your imagination, then I don't know what will. Here we go. The rinse, just get rid of some of these sort of little particles of tea. Put that to the side. Give the little elephant a taste. Okay, let's have a sniff of those wet leaves. Here we go. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, the ice cream is rum raisin ice cream. It's got an alcoholic note, cognac or rum, but let's go with rum. So rum raisin ice cream. Uh, so the raisins soaked in rum mixed with that custard. Ah, oh, it's just in your face rum raisin ice cream. Um, uh, Little, uh, again, bready note. The bread now is definitely that fluffy white bread. Now I'm picking up a little bit more of the brown crust of that bread. It's not, it's not toasted, but it's just a little bit warmer. There's a fragrance. It's hard to put my finger on right now. It's not quite foresty. It's lighter than that, but it might be a, a t touch of um, of like a church crypt, but a touch, not like a lot of, you know, uh, ripe poors are very dank. This is very, very uh, light, but it's there, just gives it a, a, an extra weight about it. All right, let's brew this up. I've got 95, let me just heat this up a little bit more. We can take a look at these leaves while that's happening. Very, very fine picking as you can see. Expertly fermented is my opinion from tasting the, the loose. You can always tell good fermentation. It's, there's a sort of rounded um, and set nature of the taste. It, it, it tastes like smooth and nothing 
that's sort of too funky. I mean, it's 2015, so it's had seven years to store. It was pressed in, actually it was pressed last year, so it was, it was six years of storage loose. It, you know, the skill of the, the team that are doing the fermenting really pays off in these kinds of teas. Color of the liquor, dark, it's gonna get darker. This is, you know, a relatively, you know, standard sort of ferment. It's not a super light ferment, um, but it's certainly not taken too far. I've got my Jingdejen cup here. All right. You can see the color of the liquor. Burnished, orange brown. Getting the micro bubbles on there as you always t seem to find with these uh, darker teas, you can see them more clearly swirling, moving, shifting. If you don't know what they are, then uh, I've done a video. I'll put a link in the description below. All right, cheers everybody. Texture is surprisingly thick. Oh, the taste, ah, amazing. It's really, really um, uh, a balance between woods and minerals, you know, very much um, got that Boulang character. Uh, and what I mean by that is Boulang tends to have quite a lot of mineral oomph, tends to have a lot of the, the uh, cedar and, you know, uh, um, that sort of um, structure that comes from minerals and woods, but then has the fruits and the creams on top. And um, yeah, um, let's focus on the, 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 the woodier notes. I'm, I'm getting cedar. Um, I'm getting um, a little bit of uh, um, woody vanilla, sweet vanilla. I'm getting, but dark, like proper, those proper dark, sticky, fudgy pods. Um, I'm getting um, the a tiny, tiny, tiny hint of licorice in the, um, in the, in the, just after I've swallowed. Um, and then I'm getting the raisins. So those woodiness move, those woody notes move into the sort of raisins. Um, I'm getting, um, uh, pavements after, um, uh, rain or in the summer. So I'm getting that distinct sort of, um, mineral, um, hot mineral note to it as well. And then rising up, I'm getting that custard, which is, you know, making up that ice cream. I'm getting lots and lots of cherry, but it's more moved into like, instead of cherry jam, it's moved to like cherry cola. Cherry cola, very a favorite drink of mine when I was, I don't know, nine years old or so. Cherry cola, I think it was like, it had just come out, cherry Coke and, um, so I remember having like a like a few months where I was binging on cherry cola. Mm. And this definitely has that cherry cola note. So the cherry, but it, the, the, the cherry flavor tastes a little bit almost like a slight marzipani. It's so sort of um, strong in terms of its sweetness. And then a little cola spice, which is sort of a, a, a mix up of lots of different spices, a little bit of um, uh, cinnamon or spice and, and those kinds of notes. So it's, it's got a lot of spice in it, um, but all sweet spices. And extremely um, great uh, combination of woods, minerals, creams and fruits all together in one. Just a winning, winning ripe pu'er. That I think if you love, or if you, you know, if you enjoy fermented teas, this is just, it's just a no brainer. It's just a great, great version of a Boulang ripe pu'er. <clears throat> Let's give it another brew. In the mouth, the finish. Again, cola. Um, a little bit of uh, tangerine, <clears throat> a 
So now it's more um, in the mouth. It's in the aftertaste. It's a little bit more uh, instead of cherry coke. It's more orange, like a coke with a, a, a bit of orange, like uh, stuck into it. Not lemon. A little bit of orange or tangerine. Um, it's got um, a good quench to it. Touch of like um, cocoa bitters and a nice, sweet, gentle juiciness. Um, and the sweetness is mm, like icing sugar, just simple sweet. It's not like a fruity sweet. It's more like an icing sugar sweetness. Um, again, really sort of taking into that idea of the sort of ice cream note. Um, and there's plenty of custody creaminess as well in the taste. Service. Ooh. Yeah. A little um, whisper of Chinese herbs. Um. Mm. Uh, you know, all Chinese herbs to me, they sort of mix up into just a Chinese herbal smell. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the predominant herb would be. Um, I'm going to say a little bit of um, Dangwei, maybe, but like it just a Chinese apothecary. Again, just like the the woody notes, very much sort of in the background, but just add a sort of depth to the tea that I think it would be missing without it. But certainly nothing like a very herbal uh, tea compared to a lot of uh, ripe pours. Second infusion, darker as you can see. Kickback champ. Hmm, <sighs> yeah. I'm getting those, those minerals. Oh, it's sweeter as well now. Um, Reminds me of like um, a fruit pastel, but like uh, a black a black currant or black cherry fruit pastel. Mmm, a little bit of brown bread in there as well. So yeah, um, malted brown bread in there as well. It's got an airy quality too, a little bit of sort of forest after the rain refreshment um, in the in the in the taste as well. A touch of milk chocolate, a lot going on, and um, the, but the predominance is creamy and mineral and sweet. So pavements ice cream, cherry, cherry sort of sweetness. That, 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 those are the predominant notes. And if you look at the cover, you can see, let me see if that camera can see it. I don't want to get it wet here, but you can see that we've even named the, the um, ice cream parlor concrete and cream, because that's the, those are the notes that we put on the sample pack when we taste it, that it reminded us of ice cream, that that cherry ripple and oops, and then um, the pavement, which is why the horse is sitting on the street. So if you see concrete and cream up here, well, we, you will if you buy it, then it's, that's not the name of the tea, it's the name of the ice cream parlor. Just to add a bit more complication into the mix, of course. Third infusion. Lovely, lovely aftertaste in this. Third infusion, just to remind myself, and then we'll have a sniff of the empty Gong Da Bei after this. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Um, malt, yeah, we talked about that malted bread. Mmm. 
like a touch of uh, blood orange, baked probably, baked slices of blood orange. So it's got, like I was talking about before, that tangerine note. It's got like a, 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 a warmer version of that. So blood orange or, or pink grapefruit, but then baked just to give it a bit more rounded, sort of aged taste to it. Body sensation starting to get a cooling sweat developing here, um, which is really, really nice and refreshing. Um, and I can imagine that this is going to be a, a beautiful late night sipper. It's going to keep you awake, so don't expect that it's going to just make you feel too relaxed. But kick back, meaning kick back, chilling out, but, you know, still sort of conversing and still being, you know, um, able to, uh, to stay awake. This is certainly not going to, um, you know, put you to sleep, although it's not going to be as, you know, energetic as a green tea or uh, uh, a uh, raw shang pua, of course. Just a great, great tea that is reminiscent of the after party enchanters and milk float nomads that we've had before. Although every tea is different, I would say that this exhibits a little bit more in terms of the mineral and that leaves a very refreshing, zingy, um, uh, um, yeah, like cooling sensation in the mouth, which I really, really love with teas, as you probably well know. And the sweetness is like a, a little bit like a cola bottle sweetness, if you've ever had those gummy sweets before. Very, very digesting. I feel like I want to belch. I'm trying to control myself a little bit, but it's definitely got that downward energy to, to help you digest. I'm gonna have one more infusion. I think this is the fifth. Did I move the elephant already? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, um, let's smell the empty Gong Dao Bay. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, treacle. Um, soda bread. Soda bread, sweet soda bread, like a, 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 yeah, soda bread, but maybe with like extra enrichment of like honey in the, in the actual dough. So sweet soda bread. Ah, oh, it's like a, a real sort of countryside, you know, wholesome loaf smell. Sweet, maybe malted. That is a really, really lovely smell. Makes me wanna pick up a loaf of soda bread. Although finding good soda bread is not necessarily easy and it's much better if it's fresh, fresh, fresh. Last infusion in front of the camera at least. I'm gonna sip on this while I edit this video. Mm. The creaminess, that ice cream note is definitely there. And yes, we could start going down one of my favorite flavor notes, which is brown bread ice cream, but let's separate it. Soda bread, brown malted sweet breads with sort of um, rum raisin ice cream and that cherry ripple. And then you've got all of those little herbal notes and dried um, baked um, oranges and all the, the, the other mineral notes that I've talked about already. Newest addition to our ripe Pua range. Very different from Nut Charmer. Um, if, you've, um, if you're um, trying to decide between the two, extremely, extremely different. Uh, be good to do an AB with them just to show the difference that you know, the, the area and the producer makes on the end result of a ripe Pua. But this is gonna be a very chilled, floaty, rest of the day for me as I sip on Kickback Champ and do the editing on this video. I hope that you enjoy it. If you pick it up, let me know your thoughts. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the Revelation of True Tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the supreme stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.